Eugene, I try to be a theist, to really believe in a personal God that has all of these different maximal characteristics, one of which is that God is supposed to know everything, omniscience. And that sounds good. I, you can say it very quickly. God knows everything. Um, but what does that really mean? Right. So there are a number of arguments against God's omniscience. So let me introduce some of them. My favorite one is called the, the argument from knowledge desse. And this is based on an interesting scenario. So suppose that I shop in a supermarket and I push a shopping cart and then I find a trail of spilled sugar on the floor and I wonder who is making this mess. <laughs> and then I decide to uh, follow the trail to see who is making this terrible mess. And suddenly I realize that there is a hole in the bag of sugar in my own shopping cart. <laughs> and then I realize that I am making the mess. And according to this argument, God cannot know what I know in knowing that I am making a mess. God can know that Eugene is making a mess. If God <laughs> looks at what I'm doing, he could know that, oh, Eugene is making a mess there. But he can never know what I know in knowing I am making the mess. <laughs> and this kind of knowledge is called knowledge de se, knowledge of I. Oh. And this argument was introduced by Patrick Grimm. And Grimm says that this argument undermines God's omniscience. And moreover, it shows that the concept of omniscience is internally incoherent because no being can be omniscient. The argument against that says that you can only know everything of the things there are to know logically. Mm. And uh, God can't know that two and two equals five. God can't understand how a married bachelor can uh, have an ice cream cone because a married bachelor is logically impossible. Mm. Um, and so, 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 that, so that's the, the, the argument. And, and similarly, God can't know what, what an individual needs to think if to be that individual mm. but god can know everything that can be known mm. yeah so that's a possible response to this argument so you might say that it is logically impossible for god to know what i know in knowing i'm making a mess because god is logically distinct from me mm -hmm. so it is it is a logically impossible task for god to perform and maybe we don't need to worry about that so that's a possible response but what's funny about this argument is that i know what i know in knowing <laughs> that i'm making a mess yeah. and obviously god doesn't know that so yeah. i know something that god doesn't know which you might find counter counterintuitive okay. because god is meant to be omniscient okay and the second argument, which is related to this argument, is what I call the argument from phenomenal knowledge. So there is something special about being me and being you and so on. And I know what it is like to be me, and you know what it is like to be you. And a bat knows what it is like to be a bat. And I can never know what it is like to be a bat, because I'm not a bat. And a bat has a special sensory apparatus called sonar. And I can never know what it is like to use this sonar and have a special sensory experience. And also there is something special about my own phenomenal or sensory experiences as well. And according to this argument, God cannot know what it is like to be me and what it is like to be you and so on. Let's say that's 100% true. Mm. And, the, and the simplistic approach to God's omniscience, knowing everything, is shown to be false. Mm. What follows from that? One way of construing these arguments is to say that actually these arguments motivate the idea that we are parts of God. So these arguments might show that not only that the classical concept of God is false, but possibly uh, some of the alternative concepts of God are correct. So according to pantheism, God is identical to the universe, and of course, we are parts of the universe. So perhaps the pantheistic God can know what it is like to be me, or what I know in knowing that I am making a mess, and so on. So these arguments can be construed as arguments for pantheism, or even pantheism. So let, me, let me try to follow you. Why would a pantheistic God, which is the simplest kind that is the universe, know what it is to be 
Eugen making the mess because God is the entire universe, so God is part of the Eugen that's making the mess. That's right. And so God really knows that. So a pantheistic God would now know something that a, that a transcendent God would not. That is correct, because according to classical theism, God is ontologically distinct from his creation. Right. So clearly, I'm not part of God. But according to pantheism, I'm a proper part of God because I'm a proper part of the universe, and the universe is a proper part of God. On the other hand, are there things that a pantheistic God cannot know that a theistic God, transcendent and independent, can know? For example, a theistic God, transcendent, can create the universe. So the theistic God knows what it's like to create a universe, maybe to think of possibilities, maybe to not think of possibilities, just eminent forth. Whereas the pantheistic God is the universe, so can't imagine what it's like to create a universe. One possible response to the claim is to say that the pantheistic God is a creator of the universe in one sense, because it, possibly the universe is a self-existent being. So in one sense, the pantheistic God knows uh, what it is like to create the universe. Well, it's more sustaining the universe. Sustaining the universe or self-creating the universe, self even though the pantheistic God might not know what it is like to create the universe as the classical God. Out of nothing. Out of nothing, yeah. And so if, as you look at the concept of omniscience, knowing everything, how important is that as a concept in understanding the divine, be the divine theistic or pantheistic? Mm. The concept of omniscience, omnipotence, and so on, these omni properties, they're quite important because most theists agree that God is the greatest possible being. So God has to have these great making properties to the maximum extent. And knowledge is, 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 a, is a key component. That's right. Knowledge, power, Benevolence. These are three main components here. 